this video is uh, going to be a walkthrough on Brewfather. Brewfather is the software I use to create recipes and to basically capture the information on brew day and all that type of stuff. It's available on uh, Windows I have, a Windows laptop and on your mobile phone so you can do it as well. I thought this would be interesting for people who haven't used it. Um, I've got a number of requests from people to do this and that's a complete lie actually. I haven't. I've got one request from Jafarum77. Forgive me if I've got your name wrong. So this is just for you, this video. But yeah, no, it's just if you use other software and you're thinking, wondering what Brewfather was, then this might be a, uh, an introduction to it, let's say. But So it's going to be a quick walkthrough. I'm not going to go through every single option because we'll be here all day. So, as I say, this is like, I used to use um, Brewer's Friend, but there's also Beersmith and Brewger and everything else. It's all the same kind of thing, but I prefer Brewfather now, basically from the first time I ever used it, because it's so simple, it's really laid out well, it's modern looking, and it's just, I think it's superior to the rest of them, so, but see what you think yourself. So when we go into it, this is basically the home page. So you can see on the left hand side you've got this menu, recipes, batches. Recipes obviously you're going to create a recipe from here. Batches is going to be every time you go to brew it creates a batch. So you're not, you don't have to, if you want to change it you don't have to change the recipe. The recipe will always be there and you just change the batch. Devices then is if, um, let's have a look. Got to, if you've got a tilt hydrometer, any kind of stuff like that, that's what I use. Inventory is what you have, fermentables, hops, miscellaneous is like salts and stuff, um, yeasts as well. Library is, this is a new thing, so you can search for um, recipes. Profiles then is basically just your equipment, what equipment you use. If we click into it, you can see there's all a lot of presets in here for the, the kind of more um, popular ones, the, you can see the buffalo there, that's the old one I used to use. That was the brew in a bag one and then we have the robo brew down here. So there's a standard robo brew and then there's, no heck this is, well, you know what, this is the one I use, 20 litres. I think I created it from the 24 litre one that um, Paul Delaney had sent me over. So so yeah, that's that. And then styles, just basically BJCP and all that. Um, for whatever you want to create, there is basically everything in there. It'll tell you how, if you want to create that beer, this is how to do it. And we'll see that as we're creating the recipe later on. Tools in is quite is quite good if you want to see how many calories are in the beer or your pitch rate. Um, color converter is a good one. I used to work in SRM um, and everybody else used to work in EBC. But now I work in EBC. And some of the recipes are in SRM or whatever that I'm looking at. And it's good to be able to convert it. Now it's not exact, but um, it's never going to be exact. And settings, yeah, we don't need to do all that. It's just however you want it to read. If you want it to read it in Imperial or Metric. So, um, yeah, so let's go into recipes then. So let's go into the Vienna Lager one. So this is how we, this is how it looks. There's your style there, your equipment, fermentables, hops, any kind of your yeast you're using, and then there's the miscellaneous there. So as we're creating, um, when we create a batch later on, we will do it. We'll have a look at that a bit more in depth. So batches, so as I say, you create a batch from a recipe, you can see this is what we've got on. So the original recipe there was a Vienna Lager. And then I've created a batch for brew day. And then if it changes, because God knows everything changes on brew day, then it'll be captured in the batch, not in their main recipe. The main recipe will be separate. And then we shall go down to inventory. So fermentables. So this is all the fermentables I have in stock. You can see it's all the different malts. And every time you buy something, you just basically input it in here. And you can put input the price as well, if that tickles your fancy. And then you can see how much the beer costs. Um, as you're creating it, if that's what you like. So yeah, that's basically all the stuff I have. This is very handy for um, when you're creating recipes because you know you don't know necessarily know what you have in stock before, but now it's like yeah, it's quite easy to do. 
it's nothing new, this is kind of beersmith, standard beersmith. Um, hops, again it's the same. You can see how exactly how what type of hops you have in stock, how much how much it cost as well, and what you can use in the recipe. And then miscellaneous is just salts and all, we'll not even go into that. And then yeast is the same thing, just what different types of yeast you have. So, so to create a new new one from scratch, you go over to the right hand side here, go to new. And it's a new recipe comes up, it automatically comes up my name. So say we want this to be a smash. It's an all grain, you can choose all grain or partial extract, extract depends what you're doing. Your equipment, this is all set up for me for efficiency 78 now. I, if I'm good I get 78 now, it's usually lower than that. And you know, you see all that. So so the style, I go and pick the style. So we want this to be, say, an American an American pale ale. So just do a search for American Amber Ale APA, American Pale Ale, there it is there. So you can click it and have a look at it. If that's the one you want, then let's do it. Go to select. You can see over here now that um, it's showing anything. The red markers are where you at now with the recipe, and this is where we. This is the target area we want to hit, which is handy. So if we go to fermentables and say add, we want to add some malt, pale malt. So don't have any pale malt. Okay, Irish stout malt. That's what we'll use. Let's say we'll use four kilos. You can see that has jumped straight up there. So our ABV is now in the zone. Our OG is in the zone. FG is out of the zone. EBC is close. If we wanted, we could put a little bit of something in, even though it says smash beer there. Let's put something in just to see if we can do it. So let's see if we've got any crystal. We what you can actually do is you don't necessarily it doesn't necessarily need to be in stock. You can pick whatever you want and put it in. So say if I wanted to get some crystal light, and I could put in say two hundred no it's kilos, zero point two, and then you can see the ABC's gone up, the OG's gone up into the zone as well. And the FG has gone up into the zone, whereas it was down below before. So I could just keep adding to that, and then you would see them moving about the place. There's no way to be used because we haven't picked any hops. So say we want to go and get some, let's do some citra hops. So two types of citra, 2017 leaf, whole means leaf. Pellets are pellets. Let's go for pellets. And it's a boil. The time is going to be 60 minutes. And say we want to use 10 grams. You can see that's given 16.6 ABUs. We're trying to get up to 30 ABUs. But let's add some. So let's add some at 10 minutes to go. So again, Citra. Say another, say 15 grams. 10 minutes to go. That's another 9 ABUs. Add thirty grams five months ago. And then if you wanted you could put in your use is a dry hop or aroma hop stand. So let's do a dry hop and we'll do it for three days. We'll do 100 grams. Okay, so you can see everything is in the zone now. So this is going to be an American Pale Ale. Pick your yeast. So we want to use something clean, crisp. What I have is some Lalmont BRY 87. It'll tell you down here. 
Yeah, there's their attenuation 76.5. So. And then at this point, I don't add anything miscellaneous in. What I do is to go into the. I should also say the mash profile. Now, this is my standard mash profile 67 degree mash. Mash out 77. Go into, you see the water at the bottom. So, in order to get a 20 litre batch, is what I'm aiming for, it's telling me to get 18.6 litres of mash water. There's just barge water there. Do you see the calculator on this side? 5.8 pH. So I can either go for my source water or what I can do is to change it to RO water instead if I wanted. And then I can go for the either the style or the target profile. If I go for target profile, then I can do say hoppy. And then normally I'll take the sparge off because I do all the additions in the mash. If you hit this button here, this magic wand, it will automatically calculate what kind of salt you need to put in. So gypsum obviously is going to be the highest. Epsom salt and then calcium chloride. So you can change that if you want. Or you can just save the recipe. And then it automatically populates in there. So on brew day... It'll tell me exactly how much of this I need without me needing to go into calculators and whatnot. So, so yeah, that is pretty much the recipe done and dusted. And um, there's no save button; you just close it automatically saves. Or you can go to this, which is brew. So then it converts that then from a recipe into a batch. The recipe is still saved in there at the top, but the batch is there now. So this is batch number 35. This list will tell you all the inventory. What you don't have, if it has this, it's not in stock. So I need to change it with something else. So you can go scope strip, click on this. It'll take you back into the recipe and you can change it if you don't have it. Um, or you can just edit it here. So you can just put in whatever you want in there. And that's a quicker way of doing it. If you do have it and you've missed it, it'll tell you down here the cost per bottle. So it's 33 pence per litre. It's quite cheap and then when you're ready you can brew so change status to brewing yes so what this is this is the mash timer okay so it's, it's the 60 minute mash plus the 16 minutes it takes for the mash out time so the mash out in six is the ramp temperature for me It'll tell you the, the list down here, and then as you're going on, you can just put in your measured values into these boxes, and it will tell you update the stats. So if you're over, if you're over your pre-boiled gravity, it'll give you an idea of what the ABV is going to be. Same with if you're under, so you can you can check it as you're going along, basically. And then there's this, which is basically the recipe as it is, and then you can see whether you're over or under. And then we go into the next stage, which is fermenting. Change it to fermenting, yes. You can set your device now here. So if you have a tilt hydrometer, you can set it in here. Now it's already connected to one of the other beers I have on at the minute, so I'm not going to do it. But yeah, it's basically just attach it. You obviously need to put the tilt into the beer for it to read properly. And again, these are just measured values when you get your final gravity. And it'll even tell you the carbonation. So if you want a bottle conditioning, it'll tell you how much you need to put in. Um, keg, force, keg, sugar. I don't bother with that. I just I keg on everything and saw the rest. I'll do it my way. I won't be told what to do by a machine. Even though I'm telling you what to do by a machine. And then finally completed. So you can sit here and it'll give you all your stats here. You can read it yourself, which is what I normally do, and then you can give it tasting notes. So we'll close out of that and we'll actually go into something that I've already done. So say the 644 NEPA. So the recipe was 8.1. Uh, it came in a lot lower than that. 5.8 came in. So uh, yeah, I had a bit of a... The brew day was, it was well under. And it was a bit of a problem. So the mistake I made then with that beer was to use 644. I was curious to know what it would do, but it, it did what it always does, which is ferments right out, left the body too thin, 
and it had this kind of tart taste on it which is what you get with 644 in a normal IPA that's what you want but obviously in a New England IPA that's not what you want you just want it to be nice and sweet and fruity and yeah it didn't work but it still tasted really good so can't complain and then again that so so yeah that's basically it that is how I do it I'm not going to go through all the settings because I don't see the point um, as I say, you can get, if you want to brew Plenty of the Elder, you can have a search, look through them all, or you can search for them. This is quite handy. You can see what the people have used. That's a lot of hops. If you want to do it, you can copy that to your account. It's a recipe added, so if I go into recipes now, you can see the Plenty of the Elder is now top of my list, and then I can go to brew if I want and brew it, or I can create a batch and then change the change the hops, change the the fermentables, everything to what I have and I can do my version of it. So that is it. That is literally it. So um, hopefully that is useful to someone. Um, if not then get your money back. I'll give you a refund. <laughs>